Have you ever met a streamer that maybe you were disappointed by or just way different than you thought they were going to be? And you don't have to say any specific names if you don't want yeah, to, but yeah. just talk about that experience maybe. Yeah, for sure. I definitely have. But that was like the number one thing that got me recognized. The name like B Breadman came from the fact that I- All right, good morning, everybody. Happy to welcome in an amazing guest today to the Mimosa Brunch. He's one of the best Warzone players walking planet Earth possibly the best mouse and keyboard player in Warzone, over 200,000 followers on Twitch, owner of Royal Forever Clothing, head baker at the bakery, which is one of the best Twitch communities on Twitch. It's Breadman. Good morning. And Breadman, let's start right there. <laughs> uh, why Breadman? Is it just like a deep love for carbs or what's the story behind the name? Dang, that was an intro, Mimosa. That was an intro. Honestly, <laughs> the, the story for Breadman isn't that crazy. I, um... I played a lot of games on Steam, and on Steam, uh, you can have the same name as anyone else. So, like, you know, I could be named Bread, and 200,000 other people can be named Bread. And a lot of other games aren't like that. Like, you have to have a unique username. And so, growing up, I had a couple different names, like Peanut Butter and, and just different food-related stuff. And there was one time I was playing some Scout's Knife on, on Counter-Strike, and the dude told me, like, that I was playing with, he was like, dude, your name is garbage. you got to change that to, like, Bread or something. And I just changed it to bread. That it's as simple as that. But the name like B Breadman came from the fact that I couldn't get bread on different platforms. So I just had to keep adding stuff. And and finally, I'm at a spot where I can get my name. Normally. <laughs> and this might be breaking news. I think we might be breaking a story right here. And I don't think anyone has asked you this yet to date. Okay. It seems like you cut your hair. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What mm -hmm. is the story behind that? What is the thoughts? Short hair versus long hair? Yeah, so over the years, I mean, I, I've probably been asked if I would cut my hair for, for numerous things, like for 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 charity, for $200,000, for, for a bunch of stuff. And I was always like, ah, I think I'm just going to, you know, leave my hair how it is. You know, like I'm not worried about cutting it. It's just not on, not on my list of things to do. And um, it's been a couple months now, but I saw this TikTok where this guy, he looked exactly like me. And he got his hair cut and, and it looks great, bro. Like he literally like hit the transformation. It was like, dang, like it made me realize that like <laughs> I, I could probably cut my hair. And so, yeah, I just cut it. I didn't even tell anyone. I just did it. And uh, yeah, I, I honestly still can't believe I did it. But it's so much easier having short hair. Like I, I easy, easy. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I have to agree. Just got a cut yesterday. It's so <laughs> nice to have short hair. The only the only probably downside to having short hair versus long hair is you have to get your hair cut very often. Like mm -hmm. it has to stay stay really on point. But, um, but yeah, let's step step back a little bit. You grew up in North Carolina. You still live in North Carolina. What was your childhood like? Yeah, I mean, growing up, it was pretty low key. You know, I went to school. I um, I feel like I started out like most people do, especially in North Carolina. Um, we didn't really have like a, a ton of resources in terms of just you know get whatever we wanted to, but we did have like a, a family PC growing up. And that was kind of like, it was sitting right in the middle of the living room. Like you opened up this big like dresser thing to get into it. Like, <laughs> oh. I don't know if that's regular, but. No, um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah, and then we pulled the chair up to it and we'd always have like some, like a time slot. Like it, on weekends, especially we'd each get an hour. And my sister, I've got a sister and a brother. My sister didn't really play any games. So my brother and I got like an hour and 30 minutes each kind of to play. And we would play things like Minecraft and Terraria. We used to just wake up at midnight for every Terraria update and just play that. And he was never a big fan of FPS games. And so uh, that was kind of a thing that I took upon myself. As I got older, I got a laptop. I actually used my brother's school laptop for the longest. And he found a way to like, jailbreak it to where we could download steam on it and get a bunch of games and it was it was a terrible laptop like the laptop was so bad that when people would throw smokes in counter-strike like it would crash like i i had seen it blue screen many times it was it was nothing new if it blue screen i, I just get up and go do something else like it was that bad but um like as i got older i was able to couple my birthday's in february and i was able to couple uh christmas and my birthday to get a couple pc parts and eventually had enough to just build my own PC. And I did that with the help of my dad. He's really tech savvy and uh, built my own PC. And it wasn't the best. I had a, I had a 1060 net at the time. And this was kind of around the time where the 2070, 2080, you know, those cards were, were it, but it still ran games like beyond what I was used to. And so that's where I really got my gaming start. Nice. And when you were growing up in North Carolina and you were going to school, would, were you a popular kid in school or how would you describe your high school experience? I mean, my high school experience was, was, Regular, I, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't really think I was that popular. Um, I, I was a try hard in school. Like I had a, I had my group of friends and, and that's what I did. I mean, I was a, I had like a 4.55 GPA when I graduated 
and we would just take you know all we had a community college and so like if we took those classes it would it would basically just make your it would boost your gpa they were like gpa boosters you know and sure. so we were taking i mean i was just focused on school i, I really enjoyed learning and, and doing that kind of stuff and so um i always i don't know people always told me that it was funny but you know I, I don't know when i think of it now i don't think i was too popular but i also had no issues with with anyone like i was basically just keeping myself and do my own thing um and you talked about um counter-strike being the game you remember playing um back in the day was that your first video game experience uh yeah well so my first like notable video game fps that i played was a game called metroid prime hunters on the ds and it was a metroid game but it like you know was was an fps at the same time and there was like multiplayer on it like it had ranked i mean we got metroid ranked back in like 2009 and we still don't have Warzone ranked, you know what I mean? So <laughs> that's pretty crazy. But it, it was a really fun game. I remember growing up, I really liked ranked in all the games that I played. I played uh, Mario Kart, and there was a there was ranked on Mario Kart too. And yeah. I remember playing against people that had like the golden steering wheel with three stars, and I was like, bro, they are like they're hacking, brother. I mean, I don't even know how they're doing that. <laughs> and they were finishing like a lap before me. It was it was insane. And, but I always remember growing up playing ranked. Metroid Prime Hunters was great. I used to bring my DS. We'd have like these days at school, back in elementary school. And I had a friend that played it too. And you could like play on LAN on your DS. And dude, it was just, it was the best experience. And I look up pictures of it now. It's the worst looking game I've ever seen in my life. Like it, it's literally <laughs> like 16 bit. Like it's crazy. But it, I, back then I remember it being great. Like the, the quality yeah. was great. It's, it's wild to like look back at those pictures. Yeah. Nostalgia is crazy. And sometimes it's best to like leave it there. So it doesn't ruin your memory. Cause I remember I'm older than you clearly, but um, like I remember playing cruise in USA on Nintendo 64 for the first time. And I was sitting in the living room with my best friend. And I was like, this looks like real life. Like, how could it get better than this? This looks like a movie right now. And then you go back and look at it and like the cars are like squares basically with giant pixels. And it, so I definitely get it. So we talked about um, playing Counter-Strike on your brother's school laptop, blue screening all the time. Where's the next step? Where do you step up and all of a sudden you're playing, you know, FPS games competitively? Yeah, I would say uh, throughout back in like 2016, I would have been 14 so I didn't have a PC yet. I would say probably in like 2017, 2018, I would have built my PC for the first time. And, and, and from that point on, I would just upgrade that PC. I still have that PC sitting in my closet. Um, nice. And so I would just, you know, take apart when I could get one and just upgrade it. And I was able to play like the games that were coming out. I wasn't able to like download every game. I do remember our internet was so bad. We had Spectrum. It was like 50 down, 10 up. And that was like the best we can get in the area. And that's actually the internet that I started streaming on. It was so bad. This is like a jump forward for a second. It was so sure. bad that like I, my mom would come home and I would know immediately when she pulled into the driveway, like I'd get packet loss on caught, like, I mean, <laughs> immediately. And, um, but going back, yeah, I would say I started my, like actually playing FPS when I was 16, 17, uh, getting into CS. We played a lot of Battlefield 1 um we played battlefield 5 we played PUBG. um but really any battle royale once i realized that i really liked the battle royale genre from playing PUBG, any anything that i could play radical heights h1z1 we played everything that that was under that genre um and when my friend told me i remember this was literally in march 2020 so when COVID started uh warzone came out like at the exact same time and at the time we had stopped playing PUBG because it was kind of dying and we, we played like a month of apex and i wasn't really enjoying it i was kind of looking for the next thing because I, I don't know i wasn't gaming as much because i just didn't enjoy the game um but march 10th comes around warzone comes out my friend's like dude we should try you know call of duty battle royale i was like bro i'm not playing call of duty like that's the most <laughs> toxic game like there's no way but i did try it that that day and i've literally never stopped playing since so I, it, I don't know. I just love Battle Royale. Were you always really good at all the Battle Royales or was Warzone really your coming out party in terms of like, hey, I could be the guy in this game? I think looking back, um, I was good. I was definitely better than all my friends, but it wasn't something that I ever really thought about. I, I just, because it seems so far-fetched to be able to play a game like for, for a living, you know, to be able to play a game and stream it and people watch it and be like, wow, he's good. Like it just, it doesn't even seem real, you know? And so growing up and playing PUBG, I did have like a 5KD past. So I have like a 1,200 hours in PUBG, which looking back is not really a lot compared to the 10,000 hours I have in Warzone now. But I had like a four and 5KD every single season in PUBG, but I didn't really think about it as like, wow, I'm, I'm really skillful. I just thought about it as like the, 
the way that I played. You know, I played four kills and I, I, I played four KD, you know? And so I never really thought about it like that, but looking back on it, I was definitely better than the people that I played with and the people that I was getting matched against for sure. I remember this is, I'm, I'm no, I'm ranting, but um, we, I went to UNC Charlotte and in, in 2019, the year before I was supposed to graduate. So I graduated high school in 2020. I went to like this land that they did over the summer at UNCC and like there was all the clubs there. There was like, a, they have like a PUBG team. And I remember, I don't remember the guy's name, but the PUBG like head coach, he was like recruiting people for the team. And like, I was so much better than everyone on that team. And I, I was like, dude, like, are they just playing for fun? But like, they were, they're <laughs> actually like good. And I was like, I don't know. It just, it blew my mind. So you uh, mentioned college. How long did that last before you realized like, hey, wait, this streaming or competitive war zone thing could be my career instead. Yeah, so yeah, I graduated high school in 2020 and then uh, the following semester, so this is all during COVID, so everything's online at this point. Um, I had really started streaming in June, July, 2020, where I was doing 12 to 4 p.m. Eastern, four hours a day, Monday through Friday, and just getting that schedule going. I was posting clips on Twitter. I didn't really use any other social media and looking back on it, Twitter's not a good way to grow. Like that's a waste of your time to, like I was like posting tweets and like like at Huskers at like Twitch underscore retweets bot like I was just posting these tweets to the void. There was no one liking them. Like I don't, looking back, I should have used my time on like TikTok or something. But um, during this time period, yeah, I'm, I started streaming. You know, it's it's literally just me in the stream, like two of my friends maybe. I'd have one to three viewers, something like that. Um, and then the what is that? The fall semester for my first um, year at college or my first semester at college was in the fall of 2020. And so I started that and my last semester was the fall of 2021. I finished three semesters. And then by that point, uh, I know this is fast forwarding a little bit, but in 2021 into 2021, I was like, dude, I'm doing so much school, so much streaming. I got to pick one, you know, and, and lucky my, my parents were on board with that. Yeah. I mean, that's gotta be a crazy decision to make, you know, Hey, I'm going to drop out of school, put all my focus into this gaming career. Mm -hmm. What kind of conversations did you have with your parents about that? It had to be a really tough decision for them to support you in that. And then for you to even make. Yeah. It's, I mean, at the time period that I made that decision, I averaged around 500 average viewers, um, which on Twitch is like, I mean, that's amazing. You know, like growing to right. that, 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 point is is so hard especially with just like basically just twitch growth like i wasn't really doing stuff other places and um i mean even at that time period it was it was tough to to kind of show them hey this is this is actually a, a smart decision to make in in the in the time period that i'm in and um but they were still super supportive i mean my parents are super young and they understand tech and in in streaming and they get it and uh, luckily, it wasn't too hard of a decision. It really was just super hard on me to even ask them. But once I asked them, you know, we talked through it and it was all good. And they've definitely never looked back since. So prior to streaming, did you have any other jobs? Did you ever do like uh, fast food or anything like that? Yeah. So when I was 15, I got a job uh, washing dishes at this. It was a pretty nice restaurant. My mom knew both the owners. Um, and so they were super nice. It was like in my small hometown. This is like one of the nicest restaurants in the area but like compared to like the places we have in charlotte like it was nothing bro like it was it was absolutely nothing but i washed dishes there uh, on weekends and it would only be like i'd work like maybe eight hours a weekend like they'd only have me from like 6 p.m uh to 9 p.m or, or 6 p.m to midnight sometimes uh but it was a really good like introductory to get into working um after that i started working at their they had like a different like deli style restaurant that was right beside it and i was working there as well did dishes and like made small sandwiches and stuff um and then once i was 16 i got a job at the ymca because that's where my mom works and uh, i was doing stuff I, I worked in the gym for a little bit like when people dunked i had to be like don't dunk please <laughs> um, and I worked at summer camp. Um, so basically when, when, you know, during the summer, kids didn't have a place to go while their, their, their parents were at work. And so I worked with kids a lot. And then during the school years, uh, we did a thing called after school where, you know, basically after school, uh, buses would pick up the kids, take them to one elementary school. And then we just all like watch them while their parents are waiting to pick them up. Basically like we just play basketball and stuff. It was mad fun. Uh, I still love it to this day. Like I could definitely do that for sure. I'm just imagining young bread men walking up to like some, you know, 
amazing athlete who's dunking <laughs> in basketball. It's like, sir, please, please, no dunking. Yeah, alone. yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. I mean, it, 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 no rim. As long as it goes straight through, you don't hang on the rim, like you're good. Um. So, yeah, we did fast forward a little bit through the streaming career. So I just want to step back a little bit. Um. We talked about, you know, when you reached the, the plateau where you were like, all right, this could be for real. I'm going to drop out of school, put all my focus into this and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Before that, you kind of talked a little bit about um, posting on Twitch adding some people like huskers um you know talk a little bit about from going from the just you watching uh just some of your friends watching to i don't know maybe like that first um that first milestone which in my opinion is like around like that 20 concurrent viewers yeah yeah so really the the, the number one thing that took me from that like three average to the 20 was this guy in chat his name is pun and he still comes into the chat he literally resubbed a couple days ago and um he came into the chat and he was telling me because back then wagers and stuff like that were popping and i didn't really like know it like that i played a little bit of cmg but i was too scared to wager my own money like i, I would play like cmg is basically like 1v1s and, and 2v2s against people and you'd load into a match you'd play them and then whoever lost you'd pay the other dude um and i used to play like 20 sometimes pay the other dude yeah 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 so dude, <laughs> there's definitely scammers on there for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so i um I was super nervous to play for money, especially my own money. I would play 25 cent matches where the winner would get 50 cents and I'd still be like sweating, like try harding. Like it was it, even playing for any amount of money was just made me super nervous. And especially because it was my own, like I didn't want to lose anything because um, it, it kind of just felt like gambling, you know. Um, right. But uh, this guy named Pun, he joins the stream. He's like, yo, I got a 2v2 child up uh, lined up with Tommy and Aiden. If you want to play them, you just find one to play them. You guys can play them. And so uh, I found someone to play him, and we we played him in a two v two, and we won the two v two. And I didn't put up any of my money, and it, it was a, it was a lucky win. Like, dude, Tommy and Aiden were leagues above me and who I was playing with, like leagues above. But we, it, it was just a bad match for them, two games in a row. And I was using the sniper, just picking up snipes. I remember winning a game, and Aiden was spectating. He was like, dude, he's hitting some crazy snipes um which is it's just insane so yeah we won that wager pun paid me two hundred dollars even though i didn't even put up any of my own money like pun put all of his own money for us to wager them and gave me all the profits so uh um, yeah he, he basically like networked for me and paid me like like he did everything i could even wish for you know and so um not only did i make two hundred dollars that night which is by far the most i'd ever won uh i also got to play against Tommy and Aiden. And a week later, Aiden actually raided me with like 7,000 people. And, and past that, it took me from that three average viewer to 20 easily. And that, that like th those milestones are not easy to hit where right. you're having that many more unique people in your stream every day. Like it was definitely tough to, to keep up, but Aiden is the real reason that it started. Yeah, and I don't think people realize like 90% of people who stream, they never get past like that three viewer, which is really just them, them on their iPad them yeah. on their iphone that was like literally to me. <laughs> go to like 20 is, is is crazy yeah so aiden uh sent you the raid you got some people to stick around which is also hard to do a lot of people get raided and then they just never see those people ever again so it's like a one hit uh which is great but um it doesn't end up working out in the long run you, you got the 20 people are, are happy with your gameplay they're sticking around what's the next evolution in in your streaming career then yeah so once aiden had raided me like a lot more people knew about me even though um, I, so I, I went from that three to 20, more than 20 people knew about me because of that, that 7,000 person raid. There was like potentially okay. 7,000 people that like at least having their mind. Um, and, a, basically a month or so after Aiden raided me, uh, Joe was looking for someone to raid when he got off. And I didn't know Joe at the time. Didn't, you know, know anything. I knew, I knew of him. Of course, he was one of the biggest streamers at the time. But it wasn't like, you know, we weren't friends at all. And so somebody recommended, hey, you should raid Breadman, you know, and, and that it was literally one comment and then Joe raided me. And so that was kind of like the almost the next step. It definitely let more people know about me, but it didn't take me any higher in terms of average viewership. But I mean, getting a 7,000 person raid from Aiden and a, basically a 5,000 person raid from Joe with, within a month time period it is literally only due to pun coming through and and basically networking for me with his own money. You know, like that is, that's crazy. And so uh, fast forward a couple months, I'm st still streaming, you know, like like actually picking up something because of these Aiden and Joe raids. 
and uh, December 2020 comes around. And by that time, I had played a lot more wagers and put up a lot more of my money and was winning. Like, I mean, I wouldn't do anything more than $5, but I was definitely winning consistently and, and felt like good about my, my skill level, you know, even though it was, you know, not as evolved. All of these players today are significantly better than they were back then. Like, you know, you took Aiden back then and Aiden now and made him 1v1, it would be like, he would just be smoking them. <laughs> um, but yeah, December 2020 comes around, comes around and Twitch Rivals happens, which was basically the first customs tournament ever. And customs, it, for those who don't know, it's like basically pros all load into the same lobby against each other instead of just being in a public lobby um, fighting bots. And so we all loaded into the lobby. We played the, the, the basically it was like qualifiers. We, we didn't get an invite to the main event. Uh, it was basically just like a, a bunch of big streamers got an invite. And so we played the qualifiers and we ended up winning the quals. And in second place, uh, so it was me, Prayers, and Nobu who had won the quals. And I'd met them all from playing wagers. Um, and in second place, Brolic. Brolic actually got second place in that. I remember Ebates was in that event. Like a lot of people that are like like bigger now actually played in those quals as well with us. But that was like the number one thing that got me recognized because after that Twitch Rivals quals, Iron had actually reached out and at the time iron was massive like he was him um yep. he had reached out and asked if i wanted to play ever and that was basically like the, the start that was definitely what took me from 20 average to even 50 average to 100 average yeah it's funny because i was a mod for iron at that time so yeah. a little inside info i had was you know his dad actually recommended that iron should check you out he likes your personality he thinks you guys would fit well together and I remember literally that that meetup basically of Iron and, and Breadman happening, and it's kind of cool to see from that uh, yeah. perspective as well. That is crazy. Well, the crazy thing is too, like if you don't know Iron, like he's not the type of person to reach out. Like he keeps his circle the exact same it is because it's like you know change is difficult, and and there's no reason that a a five thousand seven thousand viewer average streamer needs to reach out to a twenty average viewer. You know, like he gets right. nothing out of playing with me. You know, and so mm -hmm. like not even from like a like a that standpoint he also just didn't reach out to people in general even if i had seven thousand, like this just not he doesn't normally do that and so him reaching out was just beyond crazy like i mean that's just it literally is what took me from you know the 20 average 50 average to that 100 average where people actually started like recognizing my name you know right and so yeah so you you get the raid or you get to play with iron which is crazy but a lot of people have played with iron and their average doesn't go up you know so credit to you i don't want you just to say like oh it's just luck you know i got raided i got to play with iron and this would happen but you were able to hold viewers and, and keep those viewers once you got those opportunities um when you went from 100 viewers you're playing with iron you know what was the next evolution in um to where you are now you know how did you keep growing that what types what types of things did you try um to continue to to capitalize on that opportunity yeah so like playing with iron definitely like there were there were highs and lows you know like if 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 i'm live at the same time iron's live and this is after say like a month of playing with iron so we played pretty regularly i would wake up at 3 a.m to play with them and the thing is like the people that played with iron like it was me shaded opie mark devious yeet there was a bunch of us you really you had to take shifts to play with iron like <laughs> yeah. he would do like 30 hour streams and you would basically like clock in your your eight hour shift like mid his 30 hour right. stream like it was it was it was no joke like he streamed like he's probably done over 124 hour streams and he just did it for fun like he just enjoyed like that's just his thing you know um and so yeah playing with them was super fun but when i wasn't playing with them i i saw like noticeable viewer decrease i mean people wanted to watch iron like like that makes sense you know and there was a, there was a part of me that was wanted to basically get on when he wasn't on and and that was like for for a little bit i definitely did that for a solid month if i wasn't playing with him i was not playing i was not playing at the same time as him at all you know and timing that was difficult because he was doing these 30 30 sometimes i mean maybe he's done a 40 hours i mean he was grinding you know like it was it was crazy but yeah i would i would avoid him essentially in order to gain the viewers that were normally watching me when i was playing with him when he was offline and that is a really toxic way to to maintain viewership like it's very taxing and it's not like too beneficial to you because if if iron ever decides to hit that go live and i'm live it's like all oh, fuck you know what i mean like it's just that's that's the stream gone right there you know and so the number one thing that i did to get out of that loop was just to play when he was on i mean it, it obviously it's, it's it makes sense you play with the you play when he's on and any follower you get any new viewer you get are people that aren't from iron you know and so that was essentially how i got myself out of that like like rut and uh up back in, into growth and so yeah i went from 
100 average and got up to maybe 150 but really you there's 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 like keystone moments that need to happen to hit different levels of 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 viewership there's plateaus that happen and the the next real big thing that happened was iron or not iron uh i spent isaac asked me to be his duo and so we started playing tournaments together and that was what took me from basically 100 viewers to to 200 300 average um so yeah now you have been playing with a lot of big some of the biggest players in Warzone, and, you, and you're, you're starting basically your own independent career aside from them as well you're getting viewers when you're not playing with them um who's some of the funniest streamers you've played with nowadays definitely timmy toucans like that guy is hilarious uh back then uh blast the first time i played with mutex and blast i was like dude these guys are like like freaking i don't even know they're 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 the most like dumb smart people i've ever met you know what i mean like i remember the first time i played <laughs> with i played with symphony mutex and blast on my birthday in 2020 uh, 2021 i don't even know how this happened i'd never played like symphony even now is like one of the biggest warzone streamers you know and i was mad nervous but i was doing a 24-hour stream that day and i think what had happened was i was playing with iron and actually at the time uh iron and mutex and i used to play a bit like we would win streak mm -hmm. and it was that was pretty regular that. yeah that was pretty regular and i think iron had got off and then mutex had got blast in and then symphony needed a team to join and he joined us and so that's how i i played with symphony but i was i was so nervous especially being on the keys like symphony was significantly better than i was then as well um but i remember like just just playing with them i was really low key. like i didn't talk that much i was just kind of listening to them and uh, mutex and blast were so funny too but that was back then i would say timmy timmy so he's so funny <laughs> and so once you're getting like 100 200 300 concurrent viewers like that is an insane amount of, of viewers to have you said you got up to 500 when you decided like hey i'm gonna put everything into this and make this my full-time career or at least give it the best effort i can um how do you then go and maybe I don't know if you have a specific specific answer for this, but how do you then go from 500, let's say, to where you are now, which is, you know, typically over 2000? You know, what is the middle ground there? Is there milestones in between there or is it kind of like just a constant growth to, to 2000? I would say anything over a thousand. It, it's it's for, like for me personally, it just depends on who's online and uh what's going on that day say for example if i wanted to go live today today's a saturday weekends have a lot lower viewership like that's just how it is but for some reason uh their their follow-through rate is way higher you get way more followers on the weekends than you do on any other days so like my viewership today will be lower than my my normal viewership which is you know it's expected it happens on weekends and so i i'd say anything over 1000 like it's it's not I would never base and this is even true for below like whatever viewer count you're on i would never base what viewership you are uh on how good your content is like if i'm you know playing really well or or being really funny you know uh my viewer kit should it, it could still be dropping depending on what day it is who just logged on if somebody literally if one of my competitors log, if huskers logs on you know at, at the perfect time and people all get as noty you will lose viewership and, and and that's how that is like twitch is a very competitive um it's 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 super competitive and so i would just i would never worry too hard about um you know if you say your average viewership is 50 and you get on one day and it's 40 that day you know it's it's probably not how you were it's, it's probably more of those other factors who's online what's going on what day is it what time is it are you on at your regular time schedule that kind of stuff but going from 1000 to 2000 is as simple as just um getting your schedule down, making it super efficient. People know when you go live, that kind of thing, and being active on other socials. Like growing on Twitch is not about being live on Twitch. You don't grow when you're live. That just, unless you're just some anomaly. Like you grow when you're offline, when you're doing other stuff, when you're posting YouTube videos, posting TikToks, Twitter, stuff like that. Interviews. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whenever I see you logged on, you're right around 2000. A lot of times you're over 2000. Um, so you have now a wide breadth of, streaming experience you know does anything stick out to you as one of your most memorable streaming moments the thing that was you just really sticks out in your mind i would i would definitely say so um it was 2022 back in 2022 i won the optic solo yolo they basically had a 100 thousand dollar tournament and it's part of the tournament they had a 15 thousand dollar solo yolo game basically it's a customs lobby all the pros load into one game it's solos the person who wins the solos game gets fifteen thousand dollars and i remember playing that event uh, and I wasn't nervous at all because it's like, I'm not, I didn't think of myself as someone that was like 
that could win something like that. Like that seems like a like a life changing moment, you know. And, and it's just like that's not for me. I see people win the lottery all the time. I don't win the lottery. I mean, I don't play the lottery either, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't seem like it's yeah. going to be you, you know? And, and there's a lot of luck that goes into those solo YOLOs, but I played that game. I ended up winning that game and won that $15,000. And I, I just remember like, it just, it didn't feel real. Like, it's just, I'm not someone that, that wins that amount of money, you know? But mm -hmm. it, it, it really just shows that anyone can, can be in position to win something like that. And it, it, it honestly, you just got to be in the right place at the right time. The way that I played was not any better than anyone else in that tournament. It just, I was in the right place at the right time. Other people fought and I was able to third party. So it, that's definitely one of my biggest streaming moments for sure. Do you remember if you had a strategy going into that, what your strategy was for the solo YOLO? <laughs> Get a Bertha and just drive around into the last <laughs> circle. That was everyone's strat really. But yeah, yeah, I got a Bertha, picked up a most wanted, got my money up, hit a buy station, got like a gas mask. Uh, got a mini box because stims were like the wave at the time so when you had mini boxes you're able to get more stims in the gas and use those so that was basically my plan but you could have a plan in a solo yolo tournament and it not go to plan because there's just <laughs> yeah. so many people alive in those final circles yeah everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face right yeah. <laughs> i mean i don't want to get super super technical in this interview but you did mention or we mentioned you know what strategies are going into certain games from going from like a casual FPS player to becoming a pro, obviously there's a lot of natural talent that needs to be there. There's a lot of practice that goes in, but what are some of the more technical things that you do, would you say, as a pro that I'm not a lot of just, you know, I would say above casual players, like players like me, for example, you know, I play, I don't know, 30 hours a week, something like that. Like what's something that you would say like the pro players from a technical standpoint understand that maybe someone like me wouldn't. I think that uh, like map awareness is super big. Like, I, I mean, this, it doesn't really happen in this game as much, but I do remember like when, when balloons were added in Caldera, people just couldn't believe how easy it was for like, like professional players, like you said, to, to find people to go kill, you know, like they were going from person to person to person, no UAV, sometimes with the UAV, you know, something like that. And, and having like good map awareness, like while you're fighting someone, there are other people shooting, that's your next target. You know what I mean? Like being able to do two things at the same time, being able to read your map or, or hear the enemy dropping in while you're fighting someone else or, or while you're doing something else is, is super big. And in using your money well is another thing. Like if you've got $20,000, there's a lot you could do with that. And, and most people that play the game you know eight hours a day every day we'll know exactly what you need to buy to maximize you know kills or wins or whatever you're looking for but uh being on top of game information is the biggest thing like being able to, to have another target to go to map awareness is super big where if you know where you're out in the map like if i know i'm on this building and someone's on another building i've already did this fight 10 times i know exactly what play i can make that will normally work to, to fight this dude to make it fast to make it easy for me and to, to minimize death you know and one of your signatures as a pro and i would probably say as a streamer as well is how calm and focused you remain during super intense moments in warzone you know what do you attribute that to is that something you practice or is that just natural yeah i mean honestly for me like i was never someone to, to do really big reactions like i feel so fake if i like get up and be like what like that kind of stuff like <laughs> i don't know it's just i don't get that hype over stuff like that i get hype but just not in that way you know and I watched a lot of Choco Taco uh, growing up and definitely when I was playing PUBG and he's just so chill. I mean, he, he did like a 600 meter snipe and in PUBG, that is not easy. And just be like, I like, like, I mean, he, he just didn't react, you know, he didn't react. And so I think that's kind of like where I learned that because it's, it, I feel like it's cool not to react in that way, you know? Uh, but in mm -hmm. terms of like temperament and just being chill, uh, I, I try not to to get all worked up and anxious. And, and after playing for four and a half years, it's definitely a lot easier. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I try not to, to sh show it too much because it's just, I just, you know, keep it, keep it low key. If, if, if I'm, I'm, I'm out of breath, if I'm getting all like worked up and anxious and nervous and stuff, like I'm gonna get gunned, you know? And I do, I will say like, I don't get nervous playing anymore, but I do get nervous when I watch other people. Like if I'm watching someone else in an in game, that makes me nervous. But if I were playing that in game, I'd be chilling. Like I don't, I honestly don't know why that is. Yeah. And I can say as someone who doesn't play as much as you, nearly as much as you is, I think one of the biggest things is like getting super overwhelmed like in an end circle let's say there's like six teams left a small circle like trying to figure out everything you're supposed to do um and i think that probably just comes with practice right yeah yeah like playing is as much as we have like being in those in-game scenarios like i don't get nervous for the win and i also honestly unless we're on like a super long win streak i also don't 
get much out of the win either. Like as soon as we win the game, I'm just muting the game up and listening to music. You know, it's like, <laughs> all right, on to the next one, you know? Um, yeah. But I will say, I do remember a time when I was nervous in, in games. Um, and I also remember like in other games being nervous too. Like if I went and loaded up PUBG right now, I probably would get a little nervous in the end circle. Like, I mean, that's just, that's how battle royales are. So it's completely normal. But after you played for, yeah, four and a half years, I would say it gets definitely a little easier. All right. So you're a Warzone pro. Obviously, I would go ahead and say you've made a career out of streaming. Um, you know, what is your typical day in life of a, of a professional streamer, a professional Warzone player? You know, what time are you waking up? What's your schedule? like uh yeah i mean for me it's it's just like anyone else honestly well in terms of not in terms of like waking up i normally wake up like <laughs> at 10 to 12 you know I, I definitely have some leeway there um but i'll go live i'll wake up eat something go live probably around 1 2 p.m eastern something like that then i'll log off um around 10 11 p.m eastern and uh, so i'll get a full day stream in and then i'll probably like hop off to some youtube stuff uh work on some sponsorship stuff something like that and then just go to bed at night and just wake up and do it the, the, the next day it's it's honestly like a lot of people don't realize like how much streamers do outside of the stream it's not just like going live every day you know like there's a lot to do uh between streams and uh it definitely makes it fun i always have something going on always have something to do which is nice it's 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 boring to be bored you know uh, but yeah, there's definitely a lot going on. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. We've gotten the pleasure of hanging out before in San Diego. And so I've gotten asked the question is Breadman really like what he's like on stream. And I think that goes back to just, you know, you being super kind to everyone on stream. Again, you're always calm. Um, and my answer is always like, yeah, that actually is exactly how he was in real life. <laughs> Have you ever met a streamer that maybe you were disappointed by or was just way different than you thought they were going to be? And you don't have to say any specific names if you don't want yeah, to, yeah. but just talk about that experience maybe. Yeah, for sure. I definitely have. Now, I luckily, most of the people that I met, especially early on, are all just how they are on stream. Like Joe, for example, like Joe is, it, Joe O is one of my closest friends. Uh, we've been playing together for three years, and, uh, like being a duo. Um, and he's definitely just how he is on stream. Like he's, he's the exact same person and that's super nice. And it's also like, he's been a role model for me uh, with, with how I should be. Because I mean, when I first met him, I was nowhere near the size. I believe when we first started playing together, I had around 500 to 700 average viewers. But I mean, compared to Joe with 4,000, 5,000, like he was in a different league, you know? Um, and, and being able to have him as a role model to kind of like base my temperament off of and, and how I treat people, um, has been great, but yeah, I've def like for sure. And I won't name them because it's, it's not that deep, but like for sure, I've met people that are not like they are. And it's weird. It's like, oh, okay. It's like, they must be having a bad day or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so recently you, uh, and Lola have made official that you guys are dating. Um, before that you were just kind of a single dude with long hair and cats. <laughs> um, I guess I don't have a question there, but in all seriousness, you know, how did you and Lola go from just two people who play Warzone to a duo to now she's moving to a different country uh, and living near you so that you guys can uh, date? Yeah, it's it has been crazy, and it's not something that I think would work out in any other time period of of my life or any alternate reality. I mean, the the, the hurdles that we've had to jump through are crazy you know like i mean moving to the united states is not easy even visiting the united states is not easy uh we're seeing this is like off topic but we're seeing players for the world series right now since it's in vegas being denied they can't even play like they qualify for the world series and they can't even play in the world series because they can't get into the states um but yeah i mean when i first found her i was on twitter and I saw this clip and, and I was like, dude, who am I? Watching? Like, she is cracked. And she was on the keys. You could tell she was on the keys. Um, but I remember she was in Power Plant on Caldera, just absolutely murking some people. She was playing like a 2v2 with Queen Biddy and she was just going rogue. And I was like, bro, I've got to follow her. Like, she's insane. And so I followed her and I eventually um, asked her, was like, yo, are you down to do some 2v2 sometime? And she was like, yeah, I'm super down. And so we did some 2v2s and she was super nervous that like my stream would make fun of her English and, and stuff like that. Like, like it was, she, she didn't even speak English on her stream. She it was full Norwegian. And um, so we played together for the first time. We played a tournament together and we won that tournament. And that's basically like the start of everything. But, you know, fast forward like a year after winning that first tournament, um, the opportunity arose for her to, to visit on an ESTA and she was able to come and stay for a couple months and she really enjoyed the States. And then as soon as she could come back, she came back again. And then after that, we were like, dude, I mean, it's 
it really sucks with her having to come down for three months and then leave for four or five months and then come back. And so we, we eventually worked out a way for her to get a work visa. Um, we just needed an org to host it for her. And Omit actually stepped up and, do, and, and does that for her currently, which is just so nice. So she's able to be here on a work visa and it the, the opportunity I just think is is insane. But yeah, we we are started out being just super good friends. I mean, we were friends for over a year and a half. Um, and it just, it, it, it wouldn't work out to start a relationship with her being so far away and, and not being able to be here all the time. And it was, it just sucked, you know, but once she actually had the opportunity to live here, um, it's been super easy and yeah, things have just evolved and we're, we're super happy together. That's awesome. And I don't think people who haven't gone through that experience understand how hard it can be to get a visa, especially for something like streaming. So shout out Omit and Rafi over there, um, with helping that out, but it can be a super stressful time period to try to figure out, you know, hey, can I actually go and move to the United States and, you know, be with the person that I want to be with? So I can't imagine how much stress you guys are going through at that time. Yeah, it's there was a lot of luck involved. Like there was a lot of interviews where it's just like waiting to see if she passed to the next stage. Like it, it is so difficult to, to move here for sure. So now you guys are a war zone power couple, we'll call it. Um, and you guys did, you've talked a lot about Huskers. So I can only imagine that that was someone you looked up to as you were coming up in your streaming career. Even before you were a streamer, I think you talked about him playing PUBG. Um, you know, do you just want to talk about maybe the influence he had on you? Yeah, I mean, being a mouse and keyboard player in a game that there are not many mouse and keyboard players in is just... It's crazy. And when I first started playing Warzone, I didn't even realize that like there was this 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 gap. I didn't realize that people could even play on controller. It just wasn't like back in PUBG and Counter Strike, people didn't play on controller. There was there wasn't even aim assist in either of those games. There, I, I mean, yeah, people didn't even play on them. And so when I first started playing Warzone, I had no clue people were playing controller. And until maybe like a month or two in, when I started watching content creators and stuff, like realizing everyone was on controller. And then I started watching streamers and realized every streamer was on controller. And then I I found Huskers and I was like, oh, okay, you know, there's some mouse players, but coming from him, like realizing that there's some, you know, disparity between the two inputs where one is better than the other or something like that. It's just, I, I didn't, I wasn't even aware of it, you know? And so uh, he's definitely been a super big role model for me uh, in terms of like basing my own skill level off of. I remember like Husk KD was a 4.87 in, in, back in Verdansk. And my KD was like a five something, but I played a lot more for the win. He was always playing kill races and stuff. Like it, it rocked Husk. Yeah, it didn't make me better. <laughs> but like in my mind, I was like, bro, hold up. Like maybe I could like, maybe I could compete like that, you know? And, and Husk was like all time peak in Verdansk. Like he was moving. I, I could not do anything close to what he could do, you know? Um, but it definitely gave me like a role model, something to strive for, you know, some skill level to, to, to try to attain. Uh, he's definitely been a super big role model for me. And I can definitely tell that because, you know, he dates a Warzone pro, you date a Warzone pro. <laughs> he grows a mustache, you grow a mustache. He's starting to lose some of his hair, you lost a lot of yeah, your hair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it definitely you can tell that he had a massive influence on on you and your career. So. <laughs> There's some likeness. <laughs> um, going back to Lola just for a bit, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't at least ask, you know, you mentioned that she only spoke uh, Norwegian on her stream. How much Norwegian do you know now? Uh, listen, I did Duolingo. I had like a 120 day streak. And uh, it, I must just be like, I must have like short term memory loss or something. Cause like during that Duolingo <laughs> streak, I was, I was, I was pretty good. I mean, I could say some sentences, but you know, right now it's not, it's looking grim. It's not looking good. It reminds me, I took three semesters of Latin in high school and I don't know any Latin. <laughs> <laughs> do you know one Norwegian word right now that you can say? Yeah, I could say Yaimo file von Flaskenmin, which means I need to fill up my water bottle. That sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, but you did talk about controller versus keyboard mouse. I've personally never heard this debate before. I think it's brand new. Oh, yeah. Um, let me understand how strong aim assist is versus keyboard mouse. Um, you know, people get really passionate about both sides. I obviously play controller. I have played keyboard mouse on first person shooters in the past, so I do understand aim assist. But I also. I don't think that the each side like really gives in at all because keyboard mouse definitely has advantages, right? Like long distance sniping, things like that. It's definitely easier and it's definitely a massive advantage, which is why aim assist was invented in the first place. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on the whole debate between controller and keyboard mouse and aim assist? I mean, I think it like the like most of the players playing these games are not in the top level. You know what I mean? And so if you took a baseline mouse and keyboard player and a baseline controller player, they're gonna perform right about the same 
skill level, you know, like that's, that's just how it is. And so I think that in that way, aim assist is pretty balanced where, you know, like if somebody just hops onto the keys for the first time, they're going to have a lot easier time sniping, sniping in, in long distance fights than a controller player would. And, and a controller player would do better up close, you know? And so there are give and, and takes, but once you reach the top level, um, there are definitely like, like a control player at the top level can snipe just as good as a keyboard and mouse player at the top level. You know, like they, they, they're able to maximize like their, their skill level. And there's kind of like a ceiling that, that you, you really can't reach on the keys. You know, we, we may be equal to each other at mid range, long range, but close range, you know, they're spitting on a, a keyboard and mouse player. And that's kind of like how I built my, my play style is, is kind of to not fight people close range. Now in a public lobby, I'll, I'll take a close range fight and I'll win it basically every time because I just know how to play those close range scenarios against players that aren't as good. But yeah, at the top level, there's definitely some some issues with balancing. But I mean, why would they balance it for the top level? You know, like most players aren't there. And so uh, I think it is what it is. And uh, I try not to use it as, as an excuse too much. Do you think there's a certain amount of hours you could put on controller and you would be better than you are now? Yeah, for sure. But it's also not something that I, I mean, I would say after... I mean, I played for the I played controller for the first time in Caldera, and I dropped a 30 kill game within like two hours. And um, I would say if I played on controller for a good 100 hours, I think I could get to where I am now for sure. But the, also, like my play style does not like I don't need to change inputs. I, I'm losing. I, I've been playing with Joe for three years now. Joe knows I'm losing my close range engagements. Like instead, <laughs> we'll send Joe in. Like Joe's like my kill streak, and then I'll just trade him out. You know, like. That's just how it is, and in my, I base my whole playstyle around the input that I play on, and I, I've got no plans on switching, and that's also why I don't, um, I don't make excuses that much, or or even complain about it. You recently moved into a house with another content creator, Twitty. Mm -hmm. I heard possibly that you guys have recently found out about HOAs. Any oh, anything to say about that? Yeah, I wish <laughs> I had my notice right here. So apparently. <laughs> We're not allowed to have our grass reach over 12 inches long. That's pretty fair, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in our defense, what I've been trying to do, so like when I first moved into my last place, I just randomly saw a dude on my street mowing people's lawns. I was like, yo, could you mow my lawn? And that, that was that. But I haven't seen anyone mowing anyone's lawn here. Somehow everyone's lawn is mowed, but I've not seen a single person get their, their lawn mowed. I don't know if they're doing it at night, like when I'm sleeping, <laughs> like what's going on, but like, I've not seen anyone and that's I'm trying to find someone but I've only got four days left to find someone to mow my lawn before I don't know what they're gonna do it said 10 days I've got 10 days to get my lawn mode but so I think what I'm gonna have to do is just call someone and I know it's gonna be so much more expensive if I call like a a landscaper service but like I'm just trying to find someone with a mower you know I'm not trying to find yeah. someone with like all the bells and whistles I just need someone to mow the lawn so We'll figure so it out. So if you're in the North Carolina area, please <laughs> hit up Breadman if you have like a son or daughter yeah. who wants to make some extra money on the side. I'll give you one tip, and these still exist, I swear to God. Go to your grocery store. Usually they have a bulletin board outside people pin stuff to. A lot of times there's some 16-year-old kids on there that want to make some extra cash. All right. Listen, I'm going to take <laughs> you up on that. I'm going to Harris Teeter after this. All right. Perfect. You recently casted my tournament, Tournament for the Olds, which is for people who are 30 or above, which is considered elderly in the war zone community. <laughs> yeah. You know, what do you say to the people who say that you hate everyone over 30 years old based on the roasting that you gave everyone in that tournament? Yeah, it's true. I think that anyone <laughs> over 30 and even, even close to 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, getting close to 24, I would say they're just mad old and uh, yeah, I just can't stand them. I mean, a lot more people that you play with are going to be eligible for that tournament in the next two years. I mean, yeah. when you were sitting on that couch at ECW, I mean, I think it's Joa will be eligible, Brolic, Lennon. I think all those guys were like 28, Jukies. So, I mean, the next two years, it's going to be quite the competition. That is crazy. I know it really is insane to like think about, but like a, a lot of these guys, like, I mean, Tommy, I don't know exactly. I think Tommy may be 32, 31, something like that. But I mean, dude, he is he's insane you know what i mean like yeah. he's just always performing at the top level so like i definitely wouldn't let age you know like on a real note i wouldn't let age like be an excuse for people i mean even i know a 48 year old that has like a 4.8 kd like i mean it's definitely always possible you know but it, it definitely takes a lot more work getting a little bit more serious about that tournament you are what i would consider just a natural caster i think that everyone who watched that tournament uh agrees you know what do you enjoy most about casting uh i mean i've only ever casted your, both of your events and they were super fun um but the, the i liked the 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 it was very lax you know like i was able to just 
talk about what we wanted to talk about with Doug and, and roast whoever we wanted to, you know, that was very lax. Like actually casting it would be super, super difficult. I mean, you watch people, you know, on the main broadcast when they're doing custom tournament, like Dandro, Tiff, uh, Goge, they, you know, they're doing big tournaments um, and there's like a 48 minute wait between games, you know, like, dude, being able to talk about just random stuff for 48 minutes yeah that like makes you sound smart is insanely difficult. So like I do, you know, if the opportunity ever arises, you know, after after my playing career, after my streaming career, uh, I would definitely try it. But dude, they have a different level of, it, it's taxing. You know, you, you do like a six hour long cast and like that's the equivalent of like a 24 hour stream in terms of like mentally taxed. So I, I, it's a lot of work for sure. And the chat is brutal. They don't understand like all the work that goes into it. Yeah. And you know, what you were talking about where you're just kind of riffing um, I remember the first term of the olds, I was producing it myself, still am, but you know, I learned a lot from that first one. I remember um, there was no lobby codes that first tournament. So you and Doug were kind of just sitting there live on stream. I think there was probably like a thousand people watching at the time. And you guys had to basically riff for like 45 minutes while we tried <laughs> to get that lobby going. So credit to you guys as well. I mean, you guys were able to fill that time, but yeah, it can definitely be super difficult to do something like that yeah yeah once the game comes up it's like oh finally you know like, yeah it's, right thank it's god tough. <laughs> it is definitely tough so i i massive shout out to any like professional caster like they do a lot of work and they know a lot about the games so that they have stuff to talk about during those 45 minute gaps you know and you did talk about um you mentioned after your streaming career i mean you're still super young you have a decade decades left to go in your competitive war zone career and your streaming career but Fast forward, let's say you're 40, 45. Have you ever thought about what's after this? And, you know, are you planning for that at all? I think something in the, the gaming and streaming world. I mean, th this world is definitely not going away. You know, it, it's, it's definitely going to be in, in the next 15, 20 years, super evolved. But, you know, just from playing and streaming and networking, um, you know, networking is like your number one biggest thing you could do as a streamer or a content creator or something like that like the the people that i've met and the the resources that i have now compared to a couple of years ago i can only imagine you know if i stay in this space who i'd know and in in you know what i could do for other people and what other people could do for me kind of thing uh in in that time span so i think that i would still be in the gaming space maybe with an org or something like that doing influencer relationship or you know something like that what does Breadman do when he's not streaming what are your other hobbies if you have any i've been playing a lot of chess recently i just hit 1700 a bullet for those of you playing any chess um but honestly just spending a lot of time with my girlfriend uh that's basically all we do off stream and and working on the next stream you know there's 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 not too much downtime but again i think being busy is is a good feeling yeah definitely it can be it can cut both ways for sure but in the long run being busy means you're 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 employable and you're making money so <laughs> yeah, it's a good yeah. thing usually um if you could play with uh any celebrity a-list celebrity from movies tv music you know what celebrity do you think you'd want to play warzone with for a day what's crazy is that like my answer probably changes every day I'm, i'd go with little dicky right now you know like he's on my he's fresh on my mind i was listening to this podcast yesterday and they were talking about him and so yeah i'll, I'll go with little dicky nice and you did you see dave i assume no i show? actually didn't oh, i did is it good you. So good, dude. I watch a lot of TV shows. Like a lot of people will ask me like for recommendations stuff because they know I watch a lot of TV shows. That's one of the best TV shows. You gotta watch. It. I need to. Then like I always hear him like like talk about it. I see him on podcast talking about it, and like I just I'm so bad at watching stuff, but I'll I'll have to watch it. Now. I'll have to watch. These that. are easy. Twenty five minutes. You can just blow through them. Like you'll <laughs> love it. It's so good. Getting a little bit more serious. So everyone obviously knows about the doctor disrespect controversy that came up recently. I think you're one of the biggest voices in the war zone space that I personally saw that spoke out publicly against his actions, which I have to say is a super brave thing to do. Um, a lot of people don't know. It's just a lot easier not to say anything, especially mm -hmm. when you have a platform like you have. Um, you know, is there anything else you want to say about the situation or what was your you know thought process on? Hey, I got to say something about this. Yeah, like I normally don't comment on things like this because it's like you don't know everything. You know what I mean? Um, but once Doc put out his tweet, which is he's since deleted, um, once he put out his tweet, like his statement, basically talking about it and in, in editing it, like while it went live, like he posted this tweet and within 10 minutes had edited it three times, taking out the word minor, putting other words in to make it like kind of fluff it. Um, it just, it, it just struck me the wrong way. Like the way that he 
talked about the whole situation uh just pissed me off and i'm not even like a father dude if i was a father and like had a had a had a little girl or a little boy like it, that right. kind of stuff like i i genuinely don't understand how people could still support him after what had come out and the way that he handled it himself like the way that he phrased his own words in that original tweet which i won't try to quote it i don't want to miss miss misquote it um yeah it just it boiled my blood in a way that was like all right i gotta speak out about this because it's like at this point i've heard their side i've heard his side and clearly there's something going on because of i mean it, since he since deleted the tweet and, and now it's just taken as a joke and, and basically just using it as fuel for the people that are still around like it seems like he's trying to make some kind of streaming comeback and it's that's just not the platform we need to give people that are literally inappropriately talking to minors that's what he said in his own words and um, I've seen people talk about like, hey, you don't know what inappropriate means. Maybe it's like talking about cuss words and stuff. And I was like, dude, that's not what <laughs> inappropriately talking to a minor means. Like it, it, being able to like the, the fact that he admitted those words out himself, it, I feel like there, it's much worse than that. You know, if, if he was able to, everyone's always going to sugarcoat it. If he's able to to say, oh, I inappropriately messaged a minor in his in his tweet where other things he definitely sugarcoated. It's like he's not just going to go out and fully say that it, there's more that has happened, you know, and it's, it, it sucks the situation that it came out in with, with Twitch being at fault, you know, they were looking at his messages when they shouldn't have. And so there was no way to, to do anything to him essentially. Like it's the, the whole situation just screwed, but yeah, there's, I, I used to watch doc. Like I, I literally watched doc played a lot of PUBG. you know, he was like a role model, you know, and, and, and seeing that, like, there's no way I wasn't going to comment on that. Yeah. And I agree. I mean, when it first came out, there was a lot of misinformation, like on either anti doc or pro doc and people really dug in. And, you know, I heard crazy things like, Oh, you know, well, she was turning 18 the next week or whatever. It's like, dude, no one knows that. That's just completely yeah. made up out of false, you know, out of thin air. There was like that fake email that was going around. Yeah. Which people were like, Oh, that was like, dude, that's just a, an image of a fake email going around. So there was all sorts of stuff going around both sides. And the best thing you could definitely do is just listen to the man himself say what he did. And he basically, not yeah. basically, he did just say, I was very inappropriate with a minor in messages. And, you know, that was really all it took for me, honestly, personally. Um, and like you, I was a huge Doc fan. I dressed up for him as Halloween before. I had it's still the intro on the intro of my stream, which eventually I need to, to change here. Yeah. But it's okay to be a fan of someone, find out new information and change your opinion. Like for anyone who's still digging in on it and they maybe don't feel the best about it, like it's totally fine. No one's going to make fun of you for changing your opinion on something. And I think that's something I've lost in society in general right now is like you can't change your mind or you're a coward basically, which I think is, is terrible. Yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely, I've had conversations with people on Twitter that are like just diehard, like no matter what he does, like that they'll be with him. And it's like, dude, like you said you could change your opinion and, and still be the same person you are now you know like it's right it's not gonna you didn't you. do it <laughs> yeah yeah it wasn't you bro you're good. you're good all right changing subjects now um there's a lot of con i don't know if it's controversy or not but you know a lot of people say there's no such thing as warzone pros which i disagree with uh, there's definitely levels to this stuff if you've ever played in a tournament or against a pro like you can definitely tell even if you think you're pretty good at warzone there's levels to it like you might even be in the 0.01% of Warzone, but the pros like you are zero point or 0.001%. Like it's just a different level. So just to state, I fully think there are such things as Warzone <laughs> pros. But what do you think is the next step for Warzone to be considered like a serious esport? You know, what needs to happen for that to take place? I think that that take like with there being Warzone pros would have been a lot more controversial like a year ago when, you know, the only event that we have per year is basically the World Tiers of Warzone, you know, which is a super competitive event, you know, played on land. Everyone's fine out to play it, which that is the definition of pros but there was no no one was salaried and no one was in an org to be a professional player but now since the uh, esports world cup just happened um there are teams in, in in orgs that are hiring players salaried you know to play both the ewc and the world series of warzone and so now there are literal like per definition warzone pros um which is just super nice for the space i think in terms of you know out doing what we're doing now and turning warzone into an actual esport it's i think it's going to be really tough because the cdl limits a lot of what warzone can do like there there was times in verdansk where sponsors were willing to put up a million dollars two million dollars for an event lan and uh, uh it gets shut down like it people don't want the the warzone to show up the cdl that it's like a franchise league there are millions and mil like hundreds like hundreds of millions of dollars in that league um 
people just don't want that showed up, you know? And so at the very high level, there has to be some change in management or some change in opinion on uh, letting the letting Warzone and the CDL coexist, which isn't happening right now. I don't yeah, think. I mean, the viewership alone for Warzone, I think, you know, there's obviously a desire for, for that to happen. And so hopefully, um, you know, the CDL and the Warzone and Warzone can figure that out. Um, how many hours of Warzone do you think you've played in in four years? I think I've definitely played close to 10,000, maybe a little more. Um, but yeah, it's it, I've played a lot of Warzone. But I also don't get bored. My dad asked me, like, dude, how do you play the same game every day? Because he's a gamer himself. He plays a lot of, like, Metroidvania-type games. He plays a lot of Zelda. He beat. He found every Korok in uh, Breath of the Wild. Like, he's a gamer. Nice. Um, but... You know, he doesn't see how I can play Warzone for, you know, the last four years. But, it, you know, the end game is what makes me excited about the game. Like every end game is different. Uh, every zone pool is going to be different. The people that you run into in the end game and then, you know, you have to close out the game to win it. Like that's what keeps the game fresh for me. And the fact that it's a battle royale is is, is what keeps it fresh. You know, B BR will always be a little random with what's going on and what loot you have and what you're able to get that game, how many kills you have, that kind of thing. And that's what keeps the game fresh. And I think honestly it will stay fresh for me forever as long as i like the the core mechanics of the game we have world series of warzone coming up in just a few weeks um you're competing with joe woe and foreign jace big fans of both those guys um you know what does a a, a a cloud nine victory look like how do you guys win the world series of warzone i think we just stay consistent on the day this today or no this year for the World Series, it's a lot different from last year. It's actually a two-day event this year. And so the first day, um, it'll be six games. And then after those six games, the people in first place get uh, 40 points going into the next game. So they'll start day two already on 40 points. Uh, second place, uh, we'll get 30 and then it goes down the list until you know last place doesn't get any points going into day two i think day one is going to be really good for being like okay you know we we, we understand what needs to happen here for the next day uh and then staying consistent is the number one biggest thing there's a lot of like scrims and stuff going on for for the world series right now but it unfortunately like players just don't take those serious players won't really lock in nowadays unless it's for like a hundred thousand dollars because they just don't feel like they're gonna win no one it just like i didn't think i was gonna win the optic solo yolo like a lot of players nowadays just don't expect to win these tournaments they just play them because they got an invite you know and these scrims just aren't playing like the world series gonna play once people are at the world series once they're on land once they're in person nervous you know that kind of thing people are gonna be playing so ratty and uh, we know exactly what we need to do when people are playing like that and it just sucks because there's no real good practice for that other than waiting until the world series to happen because these scrims are just they're, they're they're just random tournaments to play in the meantime you know with the same form Format. yeah and you guys are choosing not to play in a lot of those scrims and other people are playing in every single one um and i guess you just described that thought process a little bit but is there anything else you know are you getting a lot of heat for not playing in scrims you know what's that situation like um i mean honestly i think for people that are are, are giving heat like they just don't watch or just don't understand which is that's just how it is um in our last like in our in the tournaments that like the big tournaments that have happened 100ks 10ks we've placed top three top five in every single one of them like i can guarantee you these teams that are placing in the top five in these scrims aren't coming close because these tournaments are playing completely different like they're getting their practice in the wrong playing field um i think another big reason for not playing all of the scrims now playing one or two is fine but like i haven't played one in like the last three weeks um players are joining every single one of these scrims they're playing five scrims a week you know and and they're not placing in a single one of them they're playing they're, they're basically trying to play how they would in the world series and doing badly because pe people are pushing things they wouldn't push people are playing in different angles they wouldn't play in in the actual event and it's it's costing them and they're not placing you know the, it, imagine playing 15 events back to back and making no money like not doing good the team vibe is down bad you're not going to think you're good you know and going into the main event mental is like a super big factor of it like these players are going into this main event thinking that they're bad because they're playing a completely different game like these scrims are not what you're going to see in the world series and so i think it's honestly for a lot of these teams more bad than it is good to be getting this this practice you know it's not actually practice because people aren't taking it serious and it's it's not going to be good on their mental for the final day um other than cloud nine who is the org that you guys are representing um i assume ssd um is probably a, a favorite do you mm -hmm. have any other favorites that you think could really win world series of warzone i think yeah ssd um gary unrational Dongy, 
uh and inkyo's team inkyo gramalock and heat says we're all super good teams what about an under horse someone who might not be a household name yet or just a team that no one's really talking about that you think could could surprise people i'm definitely going with future baba and theo that's a really good team that's a super good let's team. let's go I love that <laughs> team's vibes, honestly. They're so good. <laughs> yeah. Dude, listening to Baba play is one of the most enjoyable things of all time. He laughs constantly at everything. He just seems to always be having a good time. Yeah, so yeah, fun. 100%. Do you think there's ever been anyone who has cheated in Warzone and made it all the way to land through Qualls? Um, I, I just, I don't think so. Now, the thing is, like, there have definitely been some players, and I know we're thinking of the same person, that have made it to the land and just played terribly bad but like maybe it's just me being like like nice but like dude i just don't understand how you could cheat your way through quals and then get to the main event and expect to do good when you can't cheat on land you know like like it the the, the thought process just seems so bizarre that like there were players this year even that that were playing through the quals and then when they had to start streaming like just were blatantly hacking like some of the plays they were making <laughs> were just crazy and it was just like the, yeah. the laughing stock like dude how could you think that you could make it to the event and then also do good and like people think you're a good player when you did so good like in the quals and then just absolutely flunked it on land you know there was two players that were cheating together and picked up like a random dude that didn't even know they were cheating and then they dropped him um for the for the next event which was like the the last chance and then they did worse than him in that event like both <laughs> of them were hacking they couldn't call two times in a row like that's crazy yeah i mean i think to cheat in a video game first of all they should do a netflix documentary on people who do because you definitely have to have like some narcissistic sociopathic tendency tendencies for sure yeah so I could see a situation where they're talking it into their head, like, oh, everyone's cheating. I just got to get here and then I'll get a new platform where I can, you know, grow my stream, things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I would agree. I mean, there's definitely no proof that anyone has cheated all the way through Qualls and made it to land. Um, so I don't really think anyone should be necessarily accused of that. Um, all right. World Series of Warzone is over. We're moving on to Black Ops 6 here soon um what's your focus heading into that new call of duty cycle i'm excited so actually like we're, we're recording this right before cod next so i have not played the new game yet uh but i'm super excited to play black ops 6 we're gonna be playing that this week and so i think i'll have a a, a better idea of how that's gonna go in a couple days which is super dope um but i think for me like like getting to learn a new game getting to learn a new map potentially in this upcoming year for dance does come back um it's gonna be dope and also warzone ranked has also been rumored to come back very soon so i uh, i'm a big fan of everything's going on change is always fun and this time of year is always great for call of duty with the new multiplayer game coming out apparently zombie is going to be great uh there's a lot to do yeah everything that's come out so far looks really exciting so i'm looking yeah. forward to it um, we've talked about Joe Wo. He's your your go-to duo for sure. You guys have been playing together for a long time. You guys have become really good friends in real life. He's well known for his nonstop run of <laughs> supermodel girlfriends. Is it ever really hard to be friends with someone who who has the luck like that? Or what's it like being friends with Joe Wo? A lot of people don't actually know, but Joe doesn't really have any supermodel girlfriends. Yeah, it's 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 what? actually a ruse. Yeah, he's got he he I don't think he's ever ever had a girlfriend before it's just yeah it's, it's just some it's some elaborate thing he's made up that is crazy <laughs> i have a challenge for you uh and for the bakery i will give away a hundred dollars to someone in your community if you facetime joe right now and he answers you can literally just say joe just need to see if you'd answer and you can hang up right away all right let me um, see. and then someone who comments on this video exclamation point joe answered will give away a hundred dollars to to them all right i'm locked in hold up Where's Joe at? New FaceTime, Joe. Dude, he's uh, hopefully he's awake, bro. I don't see him being <laughs> up right now. <laughs> I don't see him being up right now. There's no way. It's rung a lot. I don't even know if you can hear me now. It's ringing. Yeah, I can hear you. It's ringing. And just for the record, it's currently 1 p.m. where you guys are. Yeah, it is 12.52 right now, and Joe <laughs> is not answering. He is. Oh, no. He is not answering. You hate to see it. It hasn't. It hasn't went out yet, though. It's still not hope. done yet. It's still going. He didn't hit ignore. Oh, FaceTime oh. unavailable. Hold up. Oh no. I don't know if you can see it. FaceTime <laughs> unavailable. 
Yeah, unfortunately, you, you guys it. aren't getting the $100. Joe, is he, there's no way he's awake right now. All right, luckily, we'll still do the $100 giveaway. <laughs> Instead of exclamation point, Joe answered. Just do exclamation point, Joe didn't answer. And we'll give away $100 <laughs> to someone who comments that on this video. That's fire. <laughs> All right, let's peek behind the curtain of competitive Warzone a little bit. A lot of people probably don't know there is an official Warzone comp discord you know what goes down in that discord what what would be what would we think is uh, pretty interesting that we wouldn't know about there's always something there's always people yapping at each other oh i thought he just messaged no it was, it was a snapchat <laughs> there's uh there's always people yapping at each other like small arguments talking about what should be banned what shouldn't be banned i think the number one thing people are talking about right now is c4 getting banned because they're just crazy good um but yeah there's always there's always stuff going on i honestly like during tournaments have it up and i need to stop watching it because it's just so funny watching people talk like it's insane, but there's a lot going on in that Warzone competitive core, but I just, I can't write it out. I can't tell you guys what's going on. Do you think that um, when you guys come together like that and say, hey, let's ban C4, do you guys have actual influence on on what they do? I hope. There was this poll in uh, the World Series core that, that somebody made the other day, and, you know, like, they're, now this makes sense, but this close to the event, now we're almost three weeks away now, uh they don't want to change too much you know what i mean like they don't want to have like hard rulings because i mean even last year they, they couldn't get the signal 50 banned within the first, the two months that world series was leading up to and there was a poll that 54 people voted it should be banned and zero people voted it shouldn't be banned and so they said that they'd take a look and they'd say that they'd get a word back um hopefully two weeks before the tournament whether or not we could get c4 banned because it's not going to change that much i mean it's just a lethal it's not like a meta you know so uh, hopefully we'll see and they do have a world series of warzone playlist for custom so they can literally just do it there and not yeah. affect the regular game so yeah. it seems like it make it a little easier yeah 100%. Um, what's something about being a cod influencer now which again i think you're probably one of the biggest cod influencers on twitch you know what's something that you didn't expect um with maybe like your day-to-day -day life or something you have to do now that you didn't really think of i um i don't know like i mean for me i've really enjoyed like streaming and like the trajectory that i've taken with what i'm doing now um but i definitely think like getting into it i initially started streaming as like oh you know i've got some free time i'm just gonna play this game but like there's there's definitely so much more that goes into streaming than just going live you know like there there there's just there's there's a lot going on and like i said earlier i've, I've said it a couple times like being busy is a really good thing and it's not for everyone like a lot of people would would enjoy some downtime but there is like virtually no downtime like i've i've got things that i've needed to do for the stream like change up some of my channel point rewards like stuff like that that i've <laughs> yeah. needed to do for like two months and i just have literally have not had a time to do it but uh, i would not i would not trade it for anything and i i really enjoy what i do but yeah i mean you know sponsorship things there's you know calls going on there's there things going out next year that we need to be ready for right now that you know people just don't understand i, I wish i could tell people about everything cool going on but uh unfortunately just can't <laughs> all right let's do a quick lightning round so for this i'm just going to read off a question you just respond right away with whatever first comes to mind okay um all right favorite movie uh idiocracy favorite band i'll go with the black keys ringo or suki ringo for sure <laughs> all-time favorite Warzone gun um i'll go car 98 from modern warfare 2019 death row meal okay so like full meal because mm -hmm. normally i'm just saying cheesecake but like my mom makes a banging cheesecake i'm definitely having that I'm getting a spicy chicken sandwich with only lettuce from Wendy's, and I'm getting waffle fries from Chick-fil-A with some honey mustard from Bojangles. That's my meal. That sounds good. Yeah. All right, you only get one superpower. What is it? Uh, telepathy. Nice. Um, your favorite Warzone caster? I'll go with uh, all time. I'll, I'll go with Grandmaster Goge. Nice. Um, your favorite duo? Joe. You completed the lightning round. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> um, Warzone's been around for four years now, which isn't a super long amount of time, but I think we've definitely had, we've had definitive Warzone eras, in my opinion, um, whether it's, you know, how the map has changed, how the player base has changed, people have gotten older, things like that. The player base in general, the skill level is way higher now because we've been playing it for four years. But if Warzone ended today, right before World Series of Warzone, who are the five people that would be on your Warzone Mount Rushmore for either the influence they've had on the game, um, just their skill, their gunny, you know, whatever reasoning you want to put behind it, who would your five be? Okay, so I'm going to go with Breadman, 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 Bread. No, I'll go with... Uh, Dylan, Dylan, yeah, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with Tommy for sure. I mean, Tommy, he's been doing it for so long. Like, he's just him all the time. I got Biffle for sure. He stayed consistent through every single game. Um, I'm going with Aiden 
Huskers and Iron. That's a great Mount, Mount Rushmore. I can't really disagree with any of those. Honorable mentions, I got to throw out Swag. I think he's had a massive influence on the game. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's a great Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Um, all right, Brad, last question. You're on the team designing the new Warzone. It doesn't have to be this next upcoming one, but it's okay. a brand new Warzone. You're on the design team. You're the creative director. What are you doing, whether it's in the gameplay or map, um, you know, how the map's laid out that would make it the best war zone ever in your opinion? I think going back, like just in terms of map, um, I think going back to how we had a Verdansk where there was no swimmable water, I think adding like the swimming mechanics and stuff was like a, a, a good like breakthrough for Warzone 2 where it's like, look guys, we've got water we can swim through now. Like it, it is very cool, but it's also super gimmicky where like, you know, Urzikstein is kind of dominated by waterways you have to cross. Like you, it, during a game, you will have to cross a waterway unless you just land on like the island that's going to be in the final circle. You know, like they, there, there are gameplay like like portions that I don't really like about Urzikstein currently that other maps didn't really have a big issue with because there was no swimmable water. You know, like Caldera didn't have the issue, Verdansk didn't have the issue, and even Almasra didn't have water in like the very middle of the map. It had that river that went through like Hydroelectric, all, all that stuff, and that was fine. It was a small river, um, but yeah, urzikstein has got too much water going on, and even if there is water, you could just freeze it, make it ice so you could run across it. That was fine in Verdansk. That was a, that was a gameplay mechanic that was great. In terms of actual like mechanics i think that removing the backpack now that we've had a lot of time to have fun with the backpack i uh i think it's time for it to go you know with with people stowing up 10 smoke grenades or 10 c4s there's just a lot of like spammable nature of, of stuff you can have three uavs in your back pocket like there used mm -hmm. to be a uh connection that you had with your teammates like yo do you have the munitions box like i've got the armor box like you had to kind of plan what you were holding and that kind of stuff which was fun and i've really enjoyed the backpack but i think that we should do away with it now uh and then weapon balancing having different guns on the ground you know there could be days where you have you know a bunch of more like heavy hitter guns on the ground lmgs more ars more smgs on the ground like you could load in a game and find a bunch of snipers like having different ground loop pools i think would keep the game super fresh and having different guns in the gulag too just small things like that could be changed to, to make the game feel good awesome i have to agree with all that <laughs> um brad i think we've said it all we've talked about a lot we've talked about kind of your personal life we've talked about your career as a streamer your career as a pro warzone player um i just want to say i think you know going into this new war zone and even right now you're one of the most influential war zone streamers that we have and uh, i couldn't be happier with some of the rep with the representation that you give uh the community i think the reason that you've grown and the reason that you get rated and the player and the the viewers stick and the reason that you play with people and the viewers stick where sometimes it hasn't for other people who have gotten that same exposure is because you're super genuine, you're super kind, and you actually are that person. You're not pretending. So just want to thank you again for your time today, doing this interview with me. And <laughs> um, I can't wait to see what happens for Brett in the future. I appreciate it, man. You killed it today. Also, I wanted to be known, for those of you who don't know, this is actually Mimosa and I's second time recording this. We recorded this <laughs> last week, and somehow my my drive failed and all that stuff. So like him being able to come through and ask all these questions in the, the same way or better is just so crazy. So you did a great job today. Appreciate it, Brett. <laughs>